Welcome to the fifth annual AIA Pennsylvania Architectural Excellence Awards broadcast. Joining us to introduce this year's celebration of the best buildings and spaces and the members and partners behind them is your 2021 AIA Pennsylvania President, Jeff Pastva. I'm honored to introduce the great work Pennsylvania's architectural community is doing, work that enhances the lives of those it touches and moves the profession forward. Every year we celebrate the work of firms and individuals across Pennsylvania for excellence in design, contributions to the profession, and commitment to the quality of the built environment. A special thank you to the members that participated in this year's programs, showcasing the breadth, depth, and caliber of work across the Commonwealth. Win or lose, take pride in solutions you've designed for your clients and their communities amidst adapting to the new realities of practicing and collaborating. AI Pennsylvania's award programs underline our mission to advance, inspire, and advocate for the profession of architecture while providing for the health, safety, and welfare of the built environment and the public. We look forward to seeing you all in person next year when we plan to resume our viewing parties across the state in tandem with a broadcast debut. Of course, this celebration and future celebrations are not possible without the generous support of our sponsors and partners. Join me in thanking them for all their support of the chapter and profession. This celebration of architectural excellence throughout the Commonwealth is made possible by our generous sponsors and partners. Thank you to our preferred partners. Fenner & Essler, provider of insurance and risk management for architects and engineers. Old Castle APG, North America's leading manufacturer of commercial masonry and hardscapes products. Milber Macris, providing a wide range of legal services tailored to design professionals with offices in Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Offit Kerman, construction law experts specializing in solving professional practice and business challenges for architects and engineers. Office locations in Harrisburg, Philadelphia, and Plymouth Meeting. Burke, Cromer, Cremonese, Pittsburgh law firm representing architects and other design professionals throughout Western Pennsylvania. Thank you to this evening's sponsors. Langan, Microsoft Resources, Sheets, Atlantic Engineering Services, Becker and Frondorf, Concord Engineering, Arbach Pollock Friedlander, SNS Resource, Phase Shift Consulting. This production's original score is courtesy of the Christopher Brooks Kenner Trio, supported by Acoustic Distinctions. 2021's prestigious AIA Pennsylvania Architectural Excellence Special Awards are brought to you by Langan Engineering. Langan provides an integrated mix of engineering and environmental consulting services in support of land development projects, corporate real estate portfolios, and the energy industry. The special awards includes recognition of significant achievements by members, citizen architects, non-members, civic and government leaders, allied professionals, and member firms who contribute to the built environment and the advancement of the profession in the Commonwealth. The AIA Pennsylvania membership at large, nearly 3,000 members strong, is given the opportunity to nominate individuals or firms for these honors. This year's Special Awards Nomination Committee deliberated on the nominees and put forth a final slate of Special Award recipients to the board for approval. This year, the committee had a record number of members nominate or self-nominate. Special Awards Nomination Committee Chair Frank Grauman, Principal of Bolin, Siwinski, Jackson, and Committee on Design Chair Bob Kelly convened nine committee members from across the state for this year's nomination committee. Michelle Dempsey, Krista Dulberg Craftition, Jeff Goldstein, Dominique Hawkins, Greg Kuffner, Parva Makio, Jamie Ober, Jeff Pastva, Rob Pathman. The 50 year timeless award recognizes a building that has endured the test of time and still resonates with the design community and the public. This year's honoree is the Philadelphia Museum of Art and Parkway Campus. AIA Pennsylvania extends a special thank you to Committee on Design Chair Bob Kelly, Special Awards Nomination Committee Chair Frank Grauman, and David Brownlee, University of Pennsylvania Professor Emeritus of the History of Art, for their dedication to this year's Timeless Architecture documentary short.
Among the fine arts, architecture has a particular power to foster community. That is as true at the scale of a family home as it is of a large city. Older, single religion societies often express their culture's identities through monumental religious buildings. Think of the Acropolis, Notre Dame in Paris, or Mexico City's Socalo. But this idea does not work in the democratic multiculture of the United States. Here, it is often the public library that takes on this role. Or in the case of Philadelphia, it's the art museum. No Pennsylvania building rivals the museum's power to shape the public domain. Nationally and internationally, it is instantly recognized as Philadelphia's iconic identifier. It presides over the city's foremost gathering place, a place of civic meaning to all citizens, regardless of their interest in art. The hallmark of the museum and its most famous attraction, the Rocky Steps, hosts a steady stream of visitors reenacting the triumph of the city's favorite fictional son. Beyond the cinematic moment, the museum is the backdrop for communal recreations, celebration, commemoration, protests, and occasionally even worship. It's a reminder of architecture's expressive power, of its ability to touch large and highly diverse communities, and it confirms architecture's status among the fine arts. The museum is a brilliant urbanistic move as it capstones the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. This civic boulevard was boldly carved from William Penn's grayly egalitarian street grid, bringing Baroque grandeur to pragmatic Philadelphia. It culminates in monumental stairs ascending the hill once known as Fair Mount. Rivaling Rome's Spanish steps, these exceed them in grandeur and social revelry while bookending Philadelphia's somber city hall. Here, architecture and landscape design have definitively de-Quakerized Philadelphia's urban fabric. The Philadelphia Museum of Art was long in the making, and it was part of an even longer project, the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. That great city beautiful boulevard and the majestic Tawny Temple, which was nicknamed the Greek Garage by a critic who intended it as a slur, are proof that compelling artistic ideas can attract and retain broad public support and also catalyze artistic collaboration. The museum, in particular, was a jazz age ensemble performance. The Parkway had been the great dream of Philadelphians starting right after the Civil War. The unforgettable vision of an arrow straight connector between the gigantic curvilinear naturalism of Fairmount Park and the gridded rationality of the world's greatest industrial metropolis. The Parkway was a project of modernization, replacing a young but rapidly obsoleted industrial zone with a boulevard of commerce and culture, a prescient roadway to a post industrial future. After decades of agitation, demolitions began in 1907, and the roadway opened in 1918, but the first public building, the Free Library, did not open until 1927. The Art Museum came next, in 1928. Commissioned in 1911, the museum was created by a difficult-to-parse collaboration between Horace Trumbauer and the partners Charles Borey and Clarence Zansinger. Trumbauer and Zantzinger were notoriously hostile to each other, refusing, it was said, even to speak. Their large offices worked anonymously and began to develop their ideas separately. But Trumbauer got to present the first design to the art jury and to the press. This was almost surely the work of his chief designer, Julian Abel, the first African-American graduate of Penn's architecture program. Abel's talents were widely recognized at the time by Philadelphia architects and architectural clients, although Trumbauer did not celebrate him publicly. Race was surely a factor in this, but it was not the custom at that time in any office to acknowledge any individual contributions. The first design, looking more like a country house than a museum, was received but not approved by the art jury. And with the city not yet putting any money into the project, the two firms continued to work on separate designs. Two recent Penn graduates, 1913 classmates, took the lead in both. In Trumbauer's office, Howell Lewis Shea created a design that could be built in phases, starting with a slender two-story building facing the parkway. It stretched its facade down the face of the cliff to a street-level lobby. William Pope Barney, working for Zantzinger, 
gathered quasi-independent buildings around a court of honor. Here, too, elevators would descend to the parkway. Street-level access would also be a feature of the final design, the great vaulted tunnel that has just reopened. In the spring of 1915, with money at last in hand, the city demanded a single design in just three weeks. Shea created the compromise, essentially welding together the separate pavilions of Barney's plan. This was approved by the art jury, and at Christmas time in 1915, an enormous model went on display in City Hall Courtyard. By the time construction began in 1919, Barney and Shea were working elsewhere, and preparation of the construction documents was entrusted to the Trumbauer office and Abel, who also drew these lively perspectives. But we should not subscribe to the romantic notion that these younger men made all the important design decisions. It was under Charles Borey's direction that a gray limestone building was transformed into golden yellow, the color of Mankato and Casota Dolomite. Moreover, it was Borey who hired color consultant Leon Solon, who designed the building's colorful terracotta ornament, and sculptor Paul Genoine, whose polychromatic Western civilization was to be the first part of a complete sculptural program. The jazzy result deserves to be called Art Deco classicism. Or we might playfully call this Jazz Age Neoclassicism with a nod to the seemingly improvised ensemble of architects, planners, and landscape architects who brought it about. This contrasts with other early 20th century cultural buildings that almost invariably clothed themselves in formal academic styles and often in the neoclassical. History tells us that the great Greek temples were originally painted in polychrome and later weathered to bear white marble. So white became the standard neoclassical practice. Pristine purity conveyed serenity, stability, and strength. The Philadelphia Museum sets aside this near-universal precedent. Its jazzier palette is richly colored, lively, and profoundly artistic. Golden Mankato stone forms the canvas for colorful roofs, cornices, triglyphs, and copper griffins. One pediment is adorned with a massive polychrome frieze of allegorical nudes. Others remain bare red brick as if beckoning later completion by future artists. Departing from neoclassical convention, the building is as refreshing as any contemporaneous early modern work. Most simply put, it is full of life and it reeks of artistry. Architecture as a lively art can benefit greatly from a curated diversity of designers, as the museum's origin stories attests. The Philadelphia Museum of Art, as a living institution, continues its diverse curation of serious public architecture. Over the last 25 years, they have not rested on their laurels, undertaking a bold set of construction, restoration, and renovation projects. The late 1990s saw an ambitious restoration of the 1928 building's exterior and Great Hall, and the programming effort that set the pattern for future expansion. In 2007, Zanziger, Bori, and Muderi's neighboring Fidelity Mutual Insurance building was restored and enlarged, creating the now Perelman Building, a venue for exhibition, curation, and research. Then, in 2010, came what is possibly the world's most cultured parking structure. Clothed in landscape and capped by the Anne Darnancourt Sculpture Garden, this boldly discreet non-building thoroughly belies its 440 car capacity. Frank Gehry's recent core project also slyly disguises what it accomplishes. He set aside his stylistic signature to deftly tuck new curatorial infrastructure space and galleries into and under the historic museum. One of the historic building's most idiosyncratic features is an almost Pyrenesian undercroft, the vaulted walkway, which was originally created to spare visitors from climbing the front portico's 72 steps. It had long been relegated to use as a service entrance. Almost archeologically, the project brought this entrance back to light while making it the key to reopening the building's heart. Radically clarified circulation and natural light have unclogged the museum's arteries, as Gary would say. But the museum refers to these changes as a mere core project, implying the future will bring new opportunities for architecture to foster public accessibility, inclusivity, and delight. 
The light is a word Vitruvius used 2100 years ago to define architecture, along with firmness and commodity. The Philadelphia Museum of Art is truly a timeless example of what he meant. AIA Pennsylvania takes great pleasure in recognizing this extraordinary building. We honor the museum for its dedication to architectural excellence. We revere the magnitude of its impact on civic life. Looking to the future, we celebrate its commitment to expanding access and to art and architecture's ability to transcend societal differences in favor of shared civic values. The Impact Designer Award recognizes a wide range of design disciplines held together by a common goal to design and create a better world through innovative, scalable, and measurable solutions. Dr. Erica Cochran Hameen is the inaugural Department Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the co-director of the Center for Building Performance and Diagnostics, CBPD, track chair of the Doctor of Professional Practice Program an assistant professor at Carnegie Mellon University, CMU. Her architectural experience includes over 50 educational, media, and broadcast, residential, community, and transportation facilities. Erica holds a BARC from Virginia Tech, an MS in Sustainable Design, and a PhD in Building Performance and Diagnostics from CMU. She leads research projects focused on design equity, indoor environmental quality, IEQ, energy efficiency, and energy policy. She serves on the board of directors for the Green Building Alliance and is a trustee for the Phipps Conservatory and Botanical Gardens. Join us in congratulating 2021's impact designer, Dr. Erica Cochran Hameen. This year's Emerging Professional Award and Associate Award nominees were put forward to the AIA Pennsylvania Board of Directors for approval by the AIA Pennsylvania Emerging Professionals Committee, or EPIC, led by Chair Parvar Marquio, AIA. The committee was responsible for putting forth their prospective nominations for each award, as well as vetting the nominees submitted by the membership at large to come to a final nomination to present to the board. 2021's prestigious AIA Pennsylvania Emerging Professional Award and EPIC Firm Recognition are brought to you by Microsoft Resources, an Autodesk Platinum partner with offices in Philadelphia, supporting architecture, engineering, and construction firms to ensure they get the most out of their software investments. Bea Spoladoro is an Italian architect in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She has worked at Rothschild Donio Collaborative for seven years, and she is now a principal at Fisher Architecture. Bea has been serving the profession as an active AIA member at a local, state, and national level. Her volunteering gigs span from leading YAF Pittsburgh to being a judge for the AIA National Honor Awards. Currently, she is vice president of AIA Pittsburgh. Her service to society is manifested through her teaching and presenting on architecture-related topics, showing how design impacts our everyday lives. Bea is also passionate about designing sustainable, healthy environments. For her, good design should improve both the physical and mental health of people. Congratulations, Bea! The following 23 firms are recognized for their commitment to the development of emerging professionals with the 2021 EPIC Firm Recognition. The American Institute of Architects defines emerging professionals as architecture graduates pursuing licensure and architects licensed within the last 10 years. 
To be eligible for this designation, an emerging professional and a firm principal from each firm took the time to complete an assessment that provided checkpoints for four critical areas of an emerging professional's development. The Architectural Experience Program, AXP, Leadership, Support, and Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Congratulations to 2021's Epic Firms, fostering the future of the profession throughout the Commonwealth. Atkin Olshin Shade Architects, BLT Architects, BRR, Cicada Architecture and Planning, Crabtree Roarbar and Associates, Design Group, Digsaw, Evolve EA, Fancy Parsley, Francis Kaufman Architects, HDR, HOK, Hunt Engineers Architects Land Surveyors, IKM Incorporated, KCBA Architects, MKSD Architects, Malay Group, Murphy and Dittenhafer Architects, PJA Architecture, PZS Architects, Rothschild Doino Collaborative, RLPS Architects, WRT LLC. The AIA Pennsylvania Student Award recognized students from all seven NAAB accredited schools in Pennsylvania. The Student Awards recognize the exceptional scholastic achievement and future promise of a graduating student. These students were selected by their faculty and have proven to be proficient in both academics and design and ready to take on the challenges and responsibilities of the work environment in an architecture firm. It's time to reveal the 2021 Student Awards. From Carnegie Mellon University, Carly Sacco, Bachelor of Architecture. Drexel University student, Natalie Cross, Bachelor of Architecture. Marywood University, Katie Bellello, Bachelor of Architecture. From Penn State University, Pooja Bhagat, Bachelor of Architecture. Thomas Jefferson University, Jakaya Jack, Bachelor of Architecture. Temple University, Will Hirschner, Master of Architecture. From the University of Pennsylvania, Julianne Petrillo, Master of Architecture. Congratulations to the 2021 AIA Pennsylvania Student Award recipients. Since 1923, Fenner & Esler Insurance Agency has been an innovative provider of insurance and risk management for architects and engineers. Known for their expertise in this specialized field, Fenner & Esler currently represents the interests of more than 1,200 firms of all sizes throughout the United States. Fenner & Esler is the commended insurance provider to the AIA of Pennsylvania and an active member of numerous AIA state and local chapters. If your firm has had claims, Fenner & Esler can offer an effective strategy to manage these claims that can help reduce further risk and help better manage both your future insurance costs and coverage. Visit Fenner & Esler online or connect with them on LinkedIn. In late September, Kim Yao, Principal of Architecture Research Office and 2021 AIA Pennsylvania Architectural Excellence Design Awards Chair, brought together two accomplished New York City-based architects, practicing in varied firm sizes and sectors to serve on this year's Design Awards jury. Mark Gardner and Elaine Molinar joined Kim at the office of her Soho firm, recipient of the prestigious 2020 AIA Architecture Firm Award for a full and enjoyable day of reviewing the 105 projects submitted to this year's Design Awards program. It's great to see all of this amazing work that other architects are creating. Firms you might, you know, work you might recognize or that might seem familiar, um, and then work you absolutely don't recognize in places that you don't know. And that's actually really invigorating. So I enjoy the process. I like seeing all the work. It's also great as, as a practitioner, um, it's also really enlightening to see how people present and talk about their projects. So I learn a lot from the process um, and I take those lessons back and share, you know, with, with my office and with my colleagues about 
how we need to do a better job of framing our stories and our narratives through the projects because you see good examples of how other people are doing it. You, you really have to be coming from some place. Like, what is your ethos? How do you operate? What is your culture? How do you feel about design? Um, and all you're doing in those design awards, you're sharing that. It's about the type of work you go after. And it's about sharing that with others. So that part is important. You know, it's like, it's what, what are you presenting that gets you excited? And I'm sure it'll get others excited. And, and you know, as far as others saying that, the, you know, oh, this process is rigged toward, you know, yes, it does cost money to photograph projects, but that's a part of your marketing. It's about how you're presenting yourself. Um, so really the design awards are, are an extension of how you um, present your work, not just to your, to your peers, but to your clients or potential clients. I think uh, if a firm decides to pursue an award, it's important to remember that each jury is unique and has its own unique dynamic and are going to be looking at the work in, in their own way. And that means that anybody's work has a chance. There's always an opportunity. And, and it's not always about the budget for a project. It's about the intent, how it was carried out, what impact does it have? I am always looking for, again, that transformative impact, clarity of goal, you know, like what are the goals um, that are trying to be achieved through the architecture, um, a resolution of the kind of detail, what, you know, how, how is the project detailed? What are the materials they're using? Um, is, it, is it breaking new ground in some way? You know, is there something that we're seeing that is a fresh take on program or a fresh take on, um, on a material usage? So it could be any number of factors. But I think that that clarity of vision is really important. And that's something that I look for. Getting to see each other's work, um, getting to critique each other's work really sort of brings your own game up. And so I think it's uh, it has a real benefit, not just for, for ourselves, but for the public. 2021's honorees exhibited distinguished design in the categories of architecture, preservation architecture, interior architecture, regional and urban design, unbuilt, impact design, single family residential design, and the new small project category. The jury recognized projects deemed worthy of award with the following levels of distinction. Silver medal. A silver medal may be granted at the jury's discretion to the project that distinguishes itself from the rest of the submissions, representing the highest level of achievement. Honor award. An honor award may be granted at the jury's discretion to projects that exemplify distinguished achievement in any category. Merit Award A merit award may be granted at the jury's discretion to any project that either lies outside of the other categories or bears an exceptional aspect that the jury feels represents excellence which deserves recognition. The jury selected seven projects for merit award recognition. In the category of impact design, ISA is the recipient of a merit award for Ambler Yards. Ambler Yards transformed a collection of mid-century lab, office, and industrial buildings into a 21st century working environment through targeted renovations and a new public landscape. Outdoor social zones invite passive recreation and public use with food trucks, farmers markets and beer gardens. Existing buildings of various styles and eras were enhanced with new entry portals, wayfinding and landscaping with a shared language of signage, materials and color. Ambler Yards is a, is a really great project of a conversion of an industrial landscape uh, to a place for community. And I think that's something that really um, design that, that creates um, community is something we're really interested in. Mm -hmm. it I think it, it's a great example of achieving quite a lot with very limited means and, and uh, uh, in a very rigorous way. And I think we all spoke about adaptive reuse and how important that is in, in our work and in um, varied contexts these days. And so it was really exciting to see a project like this take on the existing structures and then introduce new palette and new program to really invigorate, uh, invigorate its um, site and community. Congratulations, ISA. 
In the category of architecture, Erdie McHenry Architecture is the recipient of a Merit Award for Fifth Facade, Franklin County Extension. The Franklin County Extension, the first facility completed as part of the CFAES Master Plan, acts as the threshold to the coveted Waterman site, bridging between the community and the university, consistent with its land-grant mission. While the focus on practical architecture remains central to the Franklin County Extension mission, the main emphasis of this new facility is to fulfill the needs of the youth and adults it serves. This project of fifth facade, or maybe more accurately expressed as the forgotten facade, uh, was a strong contender in terms of its instructional nature of the sustainable design aspects. Yeah, I think we were very struck by the you know simple pavilion, um, how it opens up to the exterior with, for daylight and views, um, the simple idea of the green roof kind of uh, echoing the agrarian landscape that surrounds the building and really this building as a, as a tool for learning and supporting kind of education about agriculture and um, green space in the local community. Yeah, and, and on this one I have to really commend the team for really explaining the, the systems that are at work in the building and how they actually are educational um, and also showing a lot of shots with the building in use with kids being sort of taught and um, you know in programs and stuff I think it really came across as serving the community. Yeah, it's very well presented. Definitely. Congratulations Erty McHenry Architecture and local architect partner MNA Architects. In the category of architecture, Kieran Timberlake is the recipient of a Merit Award for Jeff and Judy Henley Hall, Institute for Energy Efficiency. The Institute for Energy Efficiency at University of California, Santa Barbara, required a headquarters that could adapt to a fast arriving future of scientific research. Henley Hall is a 49,900 square foot LEED Platinum Aspiring Laboratory and Education Building housing laboratories, offices, and collaboration space. The three-story building is a building that breathes and connects to its stunning natural surroundings while integrating energy-saving measures that minimize operational carbon. Henley Hall Institute for Energy Efficiency, located in Santa Barbara, really struck us because it felt really appropriate to its place. It integrates passive ventilation um, for its air systems. Um, you can see that there's great solar shading integrated with the facade of the building. It has a kind of material palette that echoes its environment in a really nice way. Um, and it also has really striking interiors. Yeah, I think I was, I was really impressed by the, um, the interiors, the stair, the railings, the openings, how everything sort of really uh, worked within the, the passive strategy of ventilation and keeping these sort of open spaces, but still being a, a um, having educational classrooms. The quality of light in the interior it was really amazing and uh, I think very conducive to learning, to being a learning environment. Congratulations, Kieran Timberlake. In the category of preservation architecture, Margitai Architects is the recipient of a Merit Award for Kingfly Spirits. Built in 1907, the 10,000 square foot structure was built as a horse stable and served several functions over the years, including a taxi depot and consignment store. For this underutilized building, which had little infrastructure, the owner challenged us to design a micro distillery with a welcoming interior that serves both as an amenity to be enjoyed by strip district neighbors as well as a destination spot for visitors. Kingfly Spirits was um, an amazing preservation project. It was it was just astounding how they took this original building and and actually shaped it and bought it back to life. And I'm just going to say with a distillery, I don't think you can kind of go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, it was very easy for us to imagine being there and mm -hmm. enjoying the architecture. I think also we are always looking for um, creative adaptive reuse projects that really embrace existing fabric. And I think we all saw that in this, like you said, Mark, the transformation was huge and the kind of fit of this program within the building felt really appropriate. Congratulations, Marjitai Architects. 
In the category of impact design, ISA is the recipient of a Merit Award for Oxford Green. The Oxford Green development is the largest, greenest project to date by the Philadelphia chapter of Habitat for Humanity. Sited in the Sharswood neighborhood on a former Philadelphia Housing Authority superblock, the project created home ownership opportunities for 20 low-income families through Habitat's unique community building model. The development's higher density attached row house model provides enhanced sustainability, efficiency, and livability, and serves as a key design prototype for the organization's future growth. We were very impressed by that, you know, it's gone beyond the single family use to a multifamily typology and row houses that uses donated materials. It's an infill project. It, it really does have a lot going for it. It's, it's modest in terms of its scale, but it's huge in terms of its impact. I think one of the things about it is it's, you know, Habitat for Humanity um, has infill housing, uh, uh, you know, in an urban setting, so a different kind of setting for it where it's multifamily um, on an infill block. And uh, so clearly it has impact. I think that's that's what really sort of drew us to it. I think we were also really struck by like the, the clarity of the presentation with this project, like great drawings and diagrams that support and explain that premise um, of the kind of re reinventing or moving forward Habitat for Humanity's model. So that was something that we also talked about, I think, when we were discussing the project. Yeah, and it has a nice um, relationship to the street, the yeah. stoop, um, and connection to the, the existing community, I think. Yeah, I think we'd all like to see more of this happen. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, ISA. In the category of architecture, KSS Architects is the recipient of a Merit Award for Tangan Hall. Tangan Hall is supported by Project Partner, Phase Shift Consulting, who served as the project's AVIT consultant. With a belief that technology should be seamlessly integrated with architecture, Phase Shift Consulting designs AVIT and security solutions for the built environment. It's truly technology design for a new era. Tangan Hall acts as a start here button for students and alumni on campus and a beacon of Penn's commitment to innovation and entrepreneurship. Home to Venture Lab, a partnership between the Wharton School, Penn Engineering, and the Weizmann School of Design, Tangan Hall centralizes Penn's startup ecosystem and provides transdisciplinary experiential learning opportunities. The design focuses on fluid interaction at various scales to create a toolbox for the university. Tangan Hall at uh, University of Pennsylvania uh, is described as this toolkit of a building, and I think we all were really struck by that um, by that premise. The building has a kind of simplicity and honesty in its choice of materials and in its expression. Um, you can see uh, the facade has, you know, integrates different colors, which are really effective in animating the facade, but there's this great transparency to the interior and really robust, light-filled and well-equipped um, interior maker spaces. So it feels like it is creating a multidisciplinary disciplinary environment um, that we want to see happening on campuses. Yeah, I think it's very welcoming on the street yeah. level. You can see activity, you can see people you know, doing their work inside, it's very inviting. Uh, it, it's, it also has a, a roof terrace, which um, you don't see in a lot of campus buildings, and, and this yeah. one has a, a beautiful uh, refuge on the rooftop outside. And I think the, um, the facade is really uh, fantastic. The curtain wall system um, really seems um, pretty innovative and uh, like you said, you can sort of see all the activity kind of happening from a corner site, like not just the working spaces inside, you know, for the privacy, but also from the street and seeing, seeing students um, doing their thing. Congratulations, KSS Architects. In the category of Unbuilt, Ewing Cole is the recipient of a Merit Award for the Mann Center. The new master plan for the Mann Center for the Performing Arts is a bold 20-year vision that seeks to provide a 21st century guest experience and expand the Mann's entertainment, education, and community programs on an already constricted campus. 
The design integrates building and landscape, creating occupiable green roof terraces, keeping the guests connected with nature, and maintain vistas to the performance stages and to the city skyline. We were really struck by um, this, again, taking a, uh, the retrofit and refurbishment of a, a existing structure. Um, I think when this gets built, it's going to be fant a fantastic space, not just to be there for performances, but um, at other times to actually go visit, which, which it isn't really now. Um, and I think so also seeing it as a phased program, um, I, I really hope this happens. I really appreciated the, uh, the, the creation of parkland space with, uh, without adding additional buildings but integrating them into the landscape I thought was very effective. Yeah, and I think we can all like imagine and tell how, you know, how much impact the project is going to have, like allowing people to come and really use those park spaces, whether their performance is happening or not. It feels like such an like, inviting and accessible kind of landscape environment that will be activated um, you know, on performance days and on off performance days, which right. is really exciting. Congratulations, Ewing Cole. For more than 30 years, the partners at Milver Macris have guided the architects and engineers of Pennsylvania, providing a wide range of services such as defending them in construction, commercial and personal injury litigation, assisting them in contract preparation and review, providing risk management advice, and advising licensure compliance. Welcome Rich Davies, Honorable AIA. Hello, I'm Rich Davies, Managing Partner of the Pennsylvania Office of Milburn Macris, Chairman of the Philadelphia Center for Architecture and Design, Council of the AIA Philadelphia, and a member of AIA PA's Legal Task Force of the Government Affairs Committee. As you can tell, I've spent a career committed to supporting and protecting you and your profession so you can create a built environment that supports and enriches our lives. That skill is ably evidenced by this year's award winners, and I congratulate you all. Your work gives me and my partners, Victoria Green and Kevin Damowski, confidence about the future at a time when so much else seems eager to challenge it. Thank you. Now in its second year, the Architectural Excellence Coat Awards program was established with two core objectives. One, forge an optional and free path for members to submit their award-worthy projects to the program that would also introduce the AIA framework for design excellence measures, formerly the Coat Top 10, with a simplified assessment tool to encourage participation. Two, Emphasize to members, industry partners, civic leaders, clients, and the public at large that the highest standards of design excellence surpass aesthetic appeal to encompass community connection, equity, economic value, resilience, and stewardship of the natural environment. This program is supported by the trio of coat leaders credited with the development of the AIA Framework for Design Excellence Assessment, the main code award submissions criteria. Join us in recognizing Brian Smiley, Jonathan Weiss, and Sherman Aronson for their continued dedication to development and rollout of the assessment tool used for both local AIA Philadelphia Awards program and state program. This year's Coat Awards jury was made up of a panel of New York City-based professionals independent of the Design Awards jury. Apoor of Goyal, Yasmin Kaloglu, and John Mealy gathered virtually to review the 14 submissions to 2021's Architectural Excellence Code Awards. They reviewed the projects through the lens of the following AIA framework for design excellence measures, indicating how buildings perform for the health and wellness of the occupants, communities, and the environments they serve. Design for integration. What's the big idea? How does the project demonstrate the intersection of design excellence and sustainable performance? Design for equitable communities. How does this project make the most of its surrounding community, integrate with it and give back? Design for ecology. How does this project respond, connect and contribute to the surrounding ecosystem? Design for water. How does the project use water wisely and handle rainfall responsibly? Design for economy. How does the design show that higher performance can be cost-effective? Design for energy. How much energy does the project use? Is any of that energy generated on-site from renewable sources? And what's the net carbon impact? 
Design for well-being. How does the design promote the comfort and health of those who spend time in it? Design for resources. How are the decisions about the materials used based on an understanding of their impact, especially carbon impact? Design for change. How does the project design anticipate adapting to new uses, adapt to climate change, and support resilient recovery from disasters? Design for discovery. What lessons for better design have been learned? The jury selected two projects to be recognized with the Code Award citation. This designation represents achievement in one or more AIA Framework for Design Excellence measures. Bright Common receives a coat citation for Outlet. Outlet reimagines a couple's unique street-to-street -street urban lot with the addition of a new outbuilding, a rental unit atop an artist studio whose defining arched window is transposed from the stonework of a neighboring 1800s church. As evidence of the home's elevated standards of healthy living achieved through passive house principles, the rental unit has been adapted to serve first responders during the COVID-19 pandemic. The jury recognizes Outlet for its achievements in the energy, integration, economy, and resources measures. Jurors remarked, this house maximizes the potential of a small infill lot with careful and thoughtful attitude toward its context. Simple yet careful massing articulations give the project its unique identity. The project is a great example of how an energy efficient, carbon conscious, healthy and elegant design is possible within the means. Congratulations, Bright Common. Onion Flats Architecture receives a coat citation for Rust House. Rust House is inspired by simplicity of form and open plan living as the primary objective for this high performance dwelling. The home's modest scale utilizes a single loaded bar building plan with primary views oriented to the park-like setting. Beneath the utilitarian materials of cortened steel, rough sawn pine and board formed concrete lies a high performance envelope paired with energy efficient passive house certified mechanical systems, thermal bridge free and airtight detailing. The jury recognizes Rust House for achievement in the energy, well-being, integration and resources measures. The jury expressed a great example of how a high performance house built to passive house standards can be architecturally beautiful with special attention to detail and materiality. The use of weathering steel in a traditional form transforms it from an industrial material to a rustic one and celebrates the house's relationship with its environment. Congratulations, Onion Flats Architecture. Jurors may select one entry among the coat submissions that demonstrates excellence across several measures of the AIA Framework for Design Excellence. Kieran Timberlake receives the Coat Award of Excellence for Jeff and Judy Henley Hall, Institute for Energy Efficiency. This project was also honored with a Merit Award from the Design Awards Jury. The Coat Awards Jury cites the energy, well-being, resources, and discovery measures as standout achievements of Jeff and Judy Henley Hall. The jury shared, this project is a remarkable example of the integration of passive cooling strategies and architectural expression. It presents an effective solution for improving efficiency in high energy buildings in a way that enhances the experience and well-being of its occupants. The success of the design is a result of the restraint with which it serves the technical and spatial components of the program. Congratulations, Kieran Timberlake. Building design and construction is changing with new materials, technology, and advanced construction methods. New, innovative materials can help meet these needs. To stay competitive, general contractors and subcontractors have to adapt to this changing environment. To answer the challenges of this evolving market, manufacturers like Old Castle are creating new ways to address the needs of the owner, architect, and contractor alike. When the Les Stump Ford dealership in Appleton, Wisconsin was designing their new facility, the architect needed to meet updated energy codes and the owner needed the durability of a masonry building. 
they selected Insultec from Old Castle's Echelon Masonry product line for the exterior walls and new automatic car wash bay. From the outside, Insultec looks like a traditional masonry wall, but each block contains a full wall assembly with a finished exterior and interior face along with insulation. Insultec is a complete thermally broken insulated masonry system which includes a full complement of blocks and concrete masonry units. Insultec offers high thermal efficiency in an innovative design, which combines a pre-assembled structural masonry unit, a molded insulation insert, and a thin veneer face. Insultec, where innovation meets style and performance. The Allied Trades Award, renamed in 2019 in honor of Raymond J. Sinagra's collaborative, whatever-it-takes spirit and dedication to the AEC community, is presented for contributions to the built environment by a contractor, developer, civil engineer, or other allied professional. The award honors those professionals who bring architects' work into reality and who uphold the tenets of design, sustainability, and collaboration. The apprenticeship program at the Carpenters Training Center offers a four-year tuition-free program in six different skilled crafts. Commercial carpentry, floor covering, pile driver, heavy highway construction, millwright and mill cabinet. Apprentices are trained in a combination of classroom, workshop, and on-the-job training. While completing the classroom workshop training at the training center, Apprentices are learning valuable skill sets that put them on the cutting edge of the construction industry, while also earning college credits towards an associate degree in carpentry. While completing the on-the-job training, apprentices are earning a competitive wage, along with benefits that allow them to prepare for their future. Congratulations to the Carpenters Training Center! The contribution to the profession by a non-architect award honors individuals, corporations, associations, or other groups who do not practice architecture. Recipients may be cited for their direct contributions to the profession, applied research, or other through other disciplines that are allied with architects or enhance the practice of architecture. Tamakwa is Micah Gursky's home. His place-focused career began when he graduated from Princeton in 1995 and came home to make Tamakwa better. As the director of the Tamakwa Area Community Partnership, a visioning project started in 1994. His first project was creating local historic markers. From there, he led Main Street and Elm Street efforts, park improvements, an LISC community safety initiative, the creation of Depot Square Park, and he was instrumental in the restoration of the Tamaqua Railroad Station. As a 16-year borough councilman, he established a 900-property, locally protected historic district. He established the Tamaqua Community Art Center and guides renowned creative placemaking efforts, such as Dear Tamaqua and Tamaqua Has Heart. Working with a philanthropist in recovery, he created Hope and Coffee to support and normalize recovery with a beautiful place to socialize and provide employment for people in recovery. As Rural Health Clinic Administrator and Director of Business Development, he purposefully locates medical facilities in pedestrian-friendly locations, including his Rural Health Clinic, the Tamaqua Medical Center, and Pennsylvania's first family medicine residency rural training track. Reframing the community's efforts in the innovative Tamaqua Choose Happiness Plan, Micah is leading an effort to create meaningful connections between people and Tamaqua. My goal is to make Tamaqua better without changing it, says Micah, because we live here. Congratulations, Micah. At Offit Kerman, we understand how to navigate the daily legal challenges of running a design firm. From professional licensure, contract negotiation, risk management, claims, and litigation, our lawyers have been assisting clients solve legal, professional practice, and business challenges for years. The Offit Kerman team focuses on helping their architectural and engineering clients in an efficient and cost-effective manner. Our unparalleled experience and knowledge can help guide you through your professional practice and business needs. Offit Kerman is pleased to announce that the firm has been ranked on American Lawyers' venerable AM Law 200 list, an annual ranking of the 200 highest grossing law firms in the United States. 
The 2021 ranking marks the first time that Offit Kerman has been included on the list. The firm has been recognized as one of the country's fastest growing full service law firms. With 250 lawyers and 15 offices from New York to South Carolina, Offit Kerman has the ability to service clients nationwide. The jury selected 11 Honor Award recipients. An Honor Award may be granted at the jury's discretion to projects that exemplify distinguished achievement in any category. In the category of architecture, Digsaw is the recipient of an Honor Award for 200 Market Street. The design responds to challenges of the through-block site by creating a distinct entry sequence from each street front ultimately leading to a verdant mid-block courtyard which serves as a shared community space and provides views and daylight to the dwelling units along its perimeter. Passage from Market Street is marked by a historic cast iron facade salvaged from the building which formerly occupied the site. This is a really uh, fantastic building, uh, really a collection uh, of buildings that's then been bought back. Adaptive reuse is something that we've we talked about and really added to, but sort of that layering of adding to the history um, of the site. I was really taken by the bold clarity that the facade of this building has. You know, the regular rhythm of the windows is very strong. It has a very uh, kind of a clear graphic look to it. Uh, the arch is beautiful. I, you know, I think it's just a very, very rigorous design. It, it also, integrates with its context really successfully and I think like the two faces of the building, mm -hmm. the through block, that courtyard which kind of becomes the heart of this whole pro uh, complex essentially, um, is it creates a series of very successful spaces in succession and, the, mm -hmm. and the t I love that the two facades are are you know sisters they're related but they're not identical and so I think that that's very um, sort of successfully uh, done in the project. Congratulations, Digsaw. In the category of preservation architecture, ISA is the recipient of an honor award for 22 South 40th. The brick structure at 22 South 40th Street, attributed to architect Frank Furness, originally housed a precursor to the Philadelphia Free Library. Major renovations in the 1920s and 1970s transformed it into a PECO showroom and a community health clinic. The design team's strategic approach to preservation looked to balance historic restoration with reactivating and reopening the building to West Philly's vibrant street life, welcoming whatever the future holds. 22 South 40th is a project that absolutely embraces the idea of, of engaging existing fabric, and in this case, um, in this in existing fabric that um, has a really strong history in its neighborhood and its community. So what we were struck by is the fact that the um, team invested in this building and really brought it back and restored it, but not just to its historic um, place, but restored all of that historic detailing and then also reinvented um, spaces for our kind of modern day lifestyles. Yeah, it, it's an amazing transformation when we saw the before and after pictures. It, you know, we were it's just like, really taken with the, the job of the actual restoration of that facade. Uh, and I, I think we really have to commend the team for the research that they did to actually see that the history of this building through its, its different incarnations as an institute, as a PICO office, and then as sort of a blocked up warehouse. And to bring it all the way back like they did is amazing. Opens it up to the street, really becomes a, a, a place. Congratulations, ISA. In the category of unbuilt, Atkin Olshin Shade Architects is the recipient of an honor award for Allentown Arts Park Pavilion. The Allentown Arts Park Pavilion will provide an improved public space for the city of Allentown. The planned pavilion will activate the existing green space by creating a flexible performance venue. The design of the new band cell and its ancillary support facilities pulls inspiration from its proximity to many of the city's artistic and cultural institutions with a curvilinear form that mimics sheet music or textiles. The, uh, the level of aspiration that the, the Allentown Art Pavilion has was incredible. It really is a very, very small object 
pavilion, which has a great impact. It really brings to life that public realm. Um, it has a, a, a multiple use potential that we can see. Uh, it, it's just a great asset for the neighborhood. I think that as a jury, you know, we're always looking for projects of all scales and sizes. And when you see a, a project like this, it has so much potential. We want to we want to come to this arts park when the pavilion is uh, when the pavilion is complete. But that that little strategic insertion and its transformative potential is something that that we were all really excited about. Yeah, it's amazing. So much with so so little, so little to move and. I really do hope it's the it's that aspirational aspect within the unbuilt category that you really hope, I really hope this happens. Yes. Congratulations, Akin Ocean Shade Architects. In the category of small project, Bright Common is the recipient of an honor award for a loan house. Designed as a house's retreat amidst a changing city, alone distinguishes itself as a vibrant interruption within the streetscape. The expressive exterior is a complement to a quiet interior. The building pulls away from its neighbors, creating a continuous belt of outdoor living space and acoustic isolation. Using passive house principles, increased insulation, and airtight construction, this all-electric home affords smaller mechanical systems, minimal energy use, and optimized indoor air quality. We all loved the Alone House. It's bold, it's simple, it's interactive with its corner site and its, you know, and its neighborhood. It has a lot of attitude, um, but it's, and it's playful. I mean, it's a house that I think I would love to be in or live in or, you know, hang out in. Um, I think we all felt that way. Yeah, I, it was, you know, kind of like a love at first sight. You kind of fall for it very easily. It has a lot of personality, mm -hmm. it's very engaging. It has a sense of play to it. I mean, you, the color is fantastic um, on a corner lot. And also it's, the design is so amazing because it makes you also think of like um, in the little lots in Tokyo where they do these little houses. Yeah. This feels like one of those little houses. Like I could see this being in another, you know, another place. And, it's a, and so it's really amazing here. Congratulations, Bright Common. In the category of single family residential, Moto Design Shop is the recipient of an honor award for Catherine Street Residence. Catherine Street is a three-story private residence in the Graduate Hospital neighborhood of Philadelphia, a double-wide residence of approximately 4,500 square feet with a backyard, second floor back deck, pilot house, and roof deck. The front facade has a brick screen that filters light into the house and creates privacy. Catherine Street residence is just, uh, I mean, what can I say? It's, it's amazing in that the, the brickwork, <laughs> uh, the, the weaving, the screening, the, the absolute um, well-designed touch of what the team did here is, is just fantastic. I think we were all sort of drawn to it immediately. Um, and, and really didn't even question, like, this is, you know, you could see the intention and, and the, the design that was coming out of this project. There's a lot of depth in that facade, a lot of variation of scale. Uh, it's very difficult to d design just a simple, beautiful facade that's bold, but also has layers of complexity to it. And I think we all felt that this had that. The house, you know, at once that layering both is the screen, but also invites you in, and then your eye is able to kind of penetrate uh, to different depths into the space. So it really, it's striking, it's restrained, that restraint is balanced with, with that playfulness. It has a very attractive garage door, which mm -hmm. is a difficult Hard thing to, to do. Yeah. yeah, right. Oh, is there a garage? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice, I didn't notice. Congratulations, Moto Design Shop. In the category of architecture, Ballinger is the recipient of an honor award for Penn Medicine Radnor. Having outgrown an ambulatory care facility with inadequate ceiling heights and disorganized layouts, Penn Medicine sought to build a new ambulatory care center in the suburbs of Philadelphia, designed for regeneration of both the site and human health. The mixed-use campus also includes an office building, hotel, and parking garage, cohesively designed with shared assets and complementary uses. 
We were all struck immediately by the Penn Medicine Radnor building in the way that the landscape really plays a central feature in the overall success of the design and speaks to the role that nature plays in health and well-being. That landscape is both about, I think, that experience of, of staff and visitors coming to and from the building, a place to break out to from the building, but also this space that all the windows, all the rooms have the opportunity to view out to that exterior um, and to that landscape. Absolutely. I think it's it, it can't be said enough that the feel of what the landscape contributes and, and it's like it's not one without the other. You know, they seem so um, well integrated, so the building and the landscape, yeah. And I think, you know, we all talked about the fact that we wish we saw more projects like this that, yeah. it, that, that invested in the landscape and the surrounding kind of territory of the building. Um, so it really was an important part of the design uh, for us. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Ballinger. In the category of interior architecture, Ewing Cole is the recipient of an honor award for Penn Squash Center. This renovation of the Penn Squash Courts reimagined an anonymous mid-century brick box as a flexible, dynamic venue for practice, recreation, and competition. Inserting refined glass courts and maple millwork within the utilitarian building shell, the design inverts the traditional theater-in-the-round configuration by placing spectators centrally within the tournament hall. Structural modifications allowed improved sight lines and circulation while introducing natural light and opening new views to campus. The Penn Squash Center is a fantastic transformation of an existing kind of tough athletic space or athletic interior on this campus. Um, I think one of the things that really jumped out at us was this great idea to create a communal center to the courts, something that feels inviting where people can hang out, it feels multifunctional, and it feels warm. And that that hub of activity creates the core for viewing and kind of training within the, within the interior. Yeah, it's a huge transformation. And I, I really love the restraint and the palette and the, the materials and the color. It really allowed the sport activity to become the focus. Yeah, it's it's really amazing that the, the layout, the interior landscape kind of um, really helps you, focuses around the squash courts, but then also provides really breakout spaces where you know students, faculty, staff can all sort of gather to, together and then its relationship to um, to its surroundings, to Franklin Field and everything as you're looking out the windows is really nice. Congratulations, Ewing Cole. In the category of architecture, Moss Architects is the recipient of an honor award for Pusides Garden Restaurant. The design challenge for the new Pusides Garden Restaurant was to create a garden oasis within the dense urban fabric of the city, while utilizing two existing 100-year-old row houses. The design enclosed the space between the existing historic buildings with two new connecting additions and an expensive hidden garden courtyard became the figurative and literal heart and focal point of the entire restaurant. Uh, this garden restaurant actually follows a theme that we, we've been talking about, it's uh, adaptive reuse and, and we know restaurants are hard, they, yeah. they turn over, uh, but the, we really have to commend the team, the client for the investment here on uh, preserving the existing buildings on the block and actually integrating them and, and creating an a internal space for the restaurant. I think we all immediately could imagine eating there, spending time in the garden, and you know, it just has such a lovely connection between the indoors and the outdoors. This was very much a, a holistic experience of dining outdoors in a very lovely way. I think also it demonstrates, you know, it, it, it takes advantage of the combination of existing fabric and new insertion to offer varied dining experiences as you move around that perimeter and face yeah. that courtyard. And, and that's like hard to pull off. So I think it, you know, what we're seeing here is, you know, they're taking advantage of that fabric and the site to offer up that diversity so that the larger restaurant feels small and intimate yeah. in all those spaces. Um, you know, they have their own character, which is really, really um, effective. So I think we all want to go there.
Congratulations, Moss Architects. In the category of architecture, Moto Design Shop is the recipient of an honor award for St. Joseph's Arupe Hall. The new Arupe Hall is a deeply symbolic and thoughtfully crafted place for living, learning, working, and worshiping. Developed jointly by St. Joseph's University and the Eastern Province of the Society of Jesus, it's a home for Jesuits and a hub for apostolic life in Philadelphia, designed to foster connection and collaboration across all the city's ministries. Arupe Hall is a very, very lovely centerpiece of the chapel and a beautiful brickwork, the, the transparency of the brickwork, the light that came through. Uh, it was just a, a, a great celebration of that kind of material to negotiate a complex shape with a, a modular unit. I think that there's this great um, in the project interplay with these vertical spaces, you know, the staircases, one, you know, with the wood, like that's very tall, and then the chapel with the wood screen at the interior, also very tall. So one, one very kind of uh, communal and more extroverted and the other more kind of spiritual, maybe more introverted. And I think that mm -hmm. play off those two spaces is really strong. Yeah, I think we really have to commend the team here for like, being able to present a very clear idea mm -hmm. in, in not so many words and not so many with key images that we immediately understood. It wasn't just that this, the arc of the chapel was some sort of random form that just worked. It, it really came from a place um, that could be understood um, and, and that, that was fantastic. Congratulations, Moto Design Shop. In the category of Preservation Architecture, BLT Architects is the recipient of an honor award for Stephen Gerard Building Canopy by Hilton. The Stephen Gerard Building is an iconic Beaux-Arts style high-rise in Philadelphia. After the threat of demolition, the building instead reveals its beautiful design elements that maintain its historic integrity with a modern interpretation. It now stands as an integral part of East Market, a mixed-use development project along Market Street. Renovated, restored, and redeveloped, the former office building now operates as a 236-key hotel under the Canopy by Hilton flag. The Stephen Gerard building is a spectacular example of uh, preservation and restoration on, in an urban setting. It integrates fantastic lighting on the exterior to really illuminate and showcase the qualities of the building. There's a, a significant amount of research with this project that the team has done to help restore uh, existing details within the building. And then, on top of all of that, I think the interiors that they introduced also really kind of complemented, complemented but made more contemporary, you know, for a contemporary audience, the use of the building. It's very inviting. It really kind of enlivens the street and in that part of um, in that part of town in a really nice way, in a positive way. Yeah, I was really struck by the the restoration of some of the elements of the yeah. building, how those were restored and, and bought back and, and modernized um, and, and highlighted really in the design. Um, one other thing I'll say is I give props to the lighting designer yeah. because I think the, the exterior lighting and the lighting mm -hmm. throughout seems really fantastic. Yeah, beautifully done. Yeah. Congratulations, BLT Architects. In the category of architecture, Digsaw is the recipient of an honor award for the Cove at the Piazza. The Cove at the Piazza reshapes a grand but underused urban space by introducing landscape gardens and a variety of wellness, fitness, and recreation spaces. While the original scale of the Piazza was well suited for large events, its new configuration creates a series of smaller spaces that are better suited for day-to-day -day use. The Cove at the Piazza is um, a plaza space, a public gathering space, and a, an apartment complex that's um, been reworked, reimagined, and uh, the team um, is really to be commended for these, like how these forms sort of start to enliven the space. And, and again, this is one of those projects where the, the sort of landscape um, that's a little more hardscape too, um, actually integrate really well and, and provide like um, really a, a lot of energy to the, to the piazza, I think. Yeah, I applaud this project for its boldness and its clarity 
and it's it's creation of these little mini environments that, that you can use these different rooms um, that are really just kind of unique if, yeah they feel um, they feel tranquil and I think it's really hard to create that sense of like serenity and tran tranquility in the midst of this type of complex so the the forms of the smaller buildings um, allow that to occur, create some sense of privacy, and creates this amazing landscape mm. for all the residents to kind of look down on this space, which is now kind of activated and, and beautiful. Congratulations, Digsaw. The 2021 Architectural Excellence Awards are supported by Burke Cromer Crumineers, a Pittsburgh law firm representing architects and other design professionals throughout Western Pennsylvania. Their practice holds expertise in a wide range of issues for their clients' business, including entity formation, ownership transitions, various aspects of business and employment law, contract negotiation, and counseling on how to manage legal risks. Mike Kremenis and his partners, Sheila Burke and John Cromer, are committed to creative and bold solutions tailored to our clients' interests. Burke Cromer Kremenis applauds all of tonight's design competition entrants and congratulates the winners. With you, we hope to design a better Pennsylvania. The Government Award is given to any individual or group working in state or local government that has made significant contributions to the profession and business of architecture and or the built environment. This year, a slate of Government Award nominees were put forward to the AIA Pennsylvania Board by the AIA Pennsylvania Government Affairs Committee, chaired by Adam Trott and Scott Compton, co-chair. The Government Award Task Force selected two recipients, one deemed the external recipient a government partner and an internal recipient duo working directly in government. Larry Newman, AICP, is the founding executive director of the Diamond City Partnership, Wilkes-Barre's downtown management organization. For 20 years, Larry has led Wilkes-Barre's downtown revival. A planner educated as an architect, Larry has always championed designed excellence first within local government and then in nonprofit service. A leader in Pennsylvania's downtown revitalization community, his initiatives and his work in legacy cities have been recognized nationally. Larry is a graduate of Harvard's Graduate School of Design. Congratulations, Larry. Jessica Shirley, Policy Director for the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, and Dave Althoff, Director of the Energy Programs Office, have been instrumental in developing and implementing policies to address one of the most important issues facing the world today, climate change. Under Dave and Jessica's leadership, DEP is working to reach long-term goals through improvements to our built environment. In the latest update to the Climate Impacts Assessment Report, developed by staff overseen by Jessica and Dave, the need for energy-efficient buildings is made very clear. The 2021 Climate Action Plan outlines several ways that building design, construction, and renovation can both reduce emissions and improve livability. In addition, the EPO's Clean Energy Program Plan outlines actions and plans of DEP to ensure that Pennsylvania is on the path to an energy efficient future. Designing and building homes, offices, stores, and other buildings to be energy efficient will be an enormous part of combating climate change today and in years to come. This award is a recognition that leaders like Jessica and Dave are just as committed to fighting climate change as we are. Congratulations, Jessica and Dave. The Medal of Distinction is the highest award bestowed by AIA Pennsylvania upon a living AIA Pennsylvania member. The recipient shall have made contributions to architecture that transcend local boundaries and have been of benefit to the profession and citizens of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Stephen Kieran and James Timberlake are architects, educators, authors, and founding partners of Kieran Timberlake, an internationally acclaimed firm with a portfolio of beautifully crafted, thoughtfully made buildings that are holistically integrated to site, program, and people. 
Founded in 1984, Kieran Timberlake's achievements are the result of a thorough examination of the craft of architecture and leadership in practice-based architectural research. The firm has received over 200 design citations, including the AIA Firm Award in 2008, the Cooper Hewitt National Design Award in 2010, and five top 10 AIA Green Awards. Since 2002, they have co-authored seven books on architecture. I, I didn't choose the profession. Uh, I, I wanted to be an architect ever since I was five years old, and it was something that my father was an Episcopalian minister, and he was a builder. You know, he did a lot of did a lot of work with architects, and uh, I was around those projects. But I also spent a lot of time just riding my bike, going from construction project to construction project, and then sort of imagining those kinds of things, you know, when I was playing by myself, you know, in the yard. So um, I didn't have Froebel blocks, but I had, you know, other, other toys and things that I played with that, you know, eventually, you know, um, it was part of the kind of creative process that, that, that I enjoyed. I was an economics major and had the opportunity to spend a summer uh, working for an industrial development bank in Athens and uh, that experience really uh, changed my path on a lot of levels. I spent most of my time that summer looking at archaeological ruins, gradually coming to the realization that I was pretty obsessed about that. and. On my way back home alone at the end of that summer, I uh, was traveling through Zurich and happened upon a little Le Corbusier design pavilion still there to this day on the lake in Zurich and looked at it, walked around it, walked in it and said, that's what I want to do. I'm done with economics and moving on, went back to school. Too late to become an architecture major, unlike James, who knew it much earlier. Um, so I uh, became a history of architecture major and history of art major and, and uh, went on from there. Never looked back, not one moment of my life. It's a, it's a great way to spend a life. Great. I think both of us were quite conscious of coming to obviously Penn and then staying in Philadelphia to work uh, for, for Bob and Denise and John Rauch um, and, and, and the continuity from Strickland and John Smith and so many other Philadelphia architects through Cray and Luke Kahn, Aldo Jergala and others that gives a luster to practicing in Philadelphia. And, and so, uh, you know, we very much both, I think, you know, see ourselves as part of that tradition, um, uh, you know, and having contributed to, you know, the kind of fabric of Philadelphia, both in terms of practice, professionalism and, and, and product. We came together in, in large measure, frankly, because of the ways in which we are different and complementary rather than necessarily the ways in which we are the same. Architecture today um, is in extraordinarily complex if we are honest with ourselves about it. And uh, having complementary personalities complementary interests, complementary skills that add to each other. And, you know, if, if, uh, if one could say as much, kind of fill in the, uh, the missing parts for each of us, I think, is a way of practicing that we believe in. We think we're going to see more and more of it um, going ahead. And, um, uh, you know, so we, we I think definitively see ourselves as a whole that's greater than the sum of the parts. You know, research for us has been an underpinning of the practice since 1984 when we began. And it, 
and it's and it's and it's research beyond data, um, but it's also about deeply understanding the underpinnings of a problem and the context for that the problem and its outcomes. And uh, while that data and that research informs design, it isn't driving the design so much as it is um, uh, a element of which forms the alchemy of the outcome. I think we've been committed from the outset to a vision of architecture as an art and a science, you know, in the, in the fully humanist vision of those words where you should not reside in one world or the other, but, um, but both. And we believe when we entered the profession, it was skewed more to the art side of the equation with less of a, less of a um, commitment and a deep, broad commitment by the profession to informing that art with research. And that's certainly been a focus of our practice to rebalance the two because we think uh, when we came into the profession, they were out of balance. And, you know, we continue to, to seek that balance. We, neither is sufficient by itself. Both together um, can make extraordinary architecture. You know, rather than choose a project, which I think both Steve and I shared the comment earlier that it was a little like choosing between our, one, you know, of one of your children in a way. It's really been about, I think, the projects that have made a difference in people's lives. Um, and nearly all of them, we can say, have made a difference in people's lives, whether they're private homes, public housing, uh, you know, college and university work, the new embassy in London, uh, Dilworth Plaza, each of them you know, has made a difference in, in the arc of, you know, somebody else's life. And I think that's what's really important to the two of us. Congratulations, Stephen and James. A silver medal may be granted at the jury's discretion to the project that distinguishes itself from the rest of the submissions, representing the highest level of achievement. This year, the jury selected one project for the Silver Medal Honor. In the category of architecture, Erdy McHenry Architecture is the recipient of the 2021 Silver Medal for Anderson Hall. The existing courtyard has been transformed into a grand glass atrium lobby to the academic building, creating a new eastern gateway and entry sequence. Anderson Hall Lobby is visible from afar, offering a renewed prominence and added functionality for a previously neglected part of campus. Anderson Hall at Temple University is a project that from our first pass through, we were all um, excited about. Um, it takes an extremely complex urban and campus condition and transforms mm. that condition, makes the campus more inviting and accessible and really kind of opens it up to the public, which we thought was really successful. Um, part of what's amazing to me about it is that it, it does that through this careful insertion of what seems like a very simple shape or simple form that is doing like a hundred different things, right? So that it's working in section, it's working in plan, it's creating volume, it's allowing people to really occupy the interior and engage with the exterior. Um, so through that very surgical move, it's incredibly transformative. For me, this was a clear winner from the very start. It's successful on the levels of as architecture, as interior design, as landscape architecture, all three of those major disciplines are working really well in concert with each other to an equally high caliber. I think the, the to what you said, Kim, the section is just so amazing because we you look at it and you go, oh, this, this pavilion has amazing shape. 
is really beautiful, well detailed, the interiors are really nice, but then you realize that it's a connector, like going through all of these spaces underneath these towers and buildings and really is a, a node, a point where all of these things come together. So I think really have to commend the team on the planning, uh, the, the university and the, the, you know, to have the sense to kind of um, do this and make those connections, realizing that in that sort of urban, brutal plaza, they were missing connection. Congratulations, Erdie McHenry Architecture. Every year, the AIA Pennsylvania Architecture Firm of the Year Award recognizes one firm whose passion and practice has produced notable architecture for at least a decade. What I would say would be the, the, the thread of origin of the firm is the large scale planning work that they started with that really led toward the development of a philosophy of, of practice. And I think that that evolved into really the ethos of the Design with Nature book, which was so seminal both to the firm and I think to the practice of planning and design in the early 60s. It really propelled the idea of an ecological approach to design and planning. That legacy has never been more important as we're facing really difficult questions of climate change and, and how we're going to care for this earth for the rest of our lives and the folks that inhabit it. It's really important for us to recognize and to understand that the nature of change has changed and that the nature of nature has changed. So as our environmental ethos continues to grow, this change in nature calls on us to really think outside our individual selves, to think bigger than ourselves, really to create and affect change that is meaningful at multiple scales. To me, what makes a truly sustainable project, and I think what some of the roots of WRT goes back to, is how you make a resilient community, a resilient building, a resilient space. Part of resiliency, I think, always ties back to making a place that people want to be and they want to connect with that place that you're creating. One could initially say we were very focused on asking the environment and the place what it needs in a broader, almost physical way. I think it has evolved to be equally about communities and people and neighborhoods. Seeking out that sense of place and character and culture from them is is coming through in our work now in ways that have added to that kind of legacy. Our goals and objective is based on the value across the board, not about the project type, not about the project scale, not about the discipline. We see and share and understanding the issues, but we use our own professional skill as a tool. You have to consider not just the building you're putting up, but what are the conditions around it, the site conditions, the history, all of those things. We make time to listen to each other. We value the importance of everyone's opinion. And I think the projects where that succeeds the most is where that's structurally built into our design process. It's a really great opportunity to get to explore some of these other parts of the practice that maybe it's not what you went to school for, but you're excited about landscape if you're an architect and you get to come together with landscape architects and planners and really have an impact on the projects and the places that we're making architecture in. Interdisciplinary is a good word, but interdependent might be a better word when we're talking about our relationship to each other as individuals, as professionals, because we depend on each other for what each of us brings and, and depth of expertise. What is the building going to look like? Is someone going to be proud to live here? Is it safe? Is it contribute to the neighborhood? Does it fit in? We're connecting to the existing urban fabric. And I think a lot about that when we design. And I hope if people who are using it are enjoying it, then that'll mean it's a success. And thinking more big picture and how to apply that in terms of landscapes or in the atmosphere and the materiality of the buildings that are selected and the impact that those materials, whether they're sustainable or just the psychological response that people have on them and how those materials make you feel when you're in a space. We do a lot of choice neighborhood projects and a lot has to do with building trust and rebuilding trust. It's very important to us to give voice to people who haven't had that before. One of the best ways to plan for a more equitable future is to confront past wrongs and level the playing field. The city is made up of many neighborhoods and the city is, is not a city without 
all of its people prospering together. I think it's going to be incumbent on us as a society, but certainly as designers in the next 20 or more years to understand how to house people in a way that protects them from a changing climate, that accommodates more and more people, and that does it humanely. And I think that we're well positioned for that. That sense of urgency in the, our process of inclusion and helping to build communities and build capacity amongst communities, I think is never been more important. I don't know where we head it, but I'm very excited to see we can be more flexible and we can be more open. And especially the way we work with the client communities requires so much more flexible dynamics. Through these last few years, we've really questioned, you know, what are we, what are, are we doing enough, right? What are we putting our personal time and energy toward day in and day out with the organizations and our personal lives, the communities that we live in? My hope is, is that this award and the light that it shines on the work of the firm inspires others in terms of their practice, the direction of their practice, and the impact that they have in the world. The beauty of planning and design to me is how it is at one moment fairly universal in understanding. It is individual in its conception and that it's the individuals in the room that make it happen. And it's only through them and the energy and power of their ideas that we can make our cities and communities, and campuses and world better. Congratulations, WRT. Thank you for joining us to celebrate great architecture this evening. A special thanks to all that participated in this year's awards programs. One more round of applause for our generous sponsors. Fenner & Essler. Old Castle APG. Milver Macris. Offit Kerman, Burt Cromer Cromanese, Langan, Microsol Resources, Sheets, Atlantic Engineering Services, Becker and Frondorf, Concord Engineering, Arbach Pollock Friedlander, SNS Resource, Phase Shift Consulting. Acoustic Distinctions